65 Days of Awesome, Celebrate Success Through Service. My name is Tamara Hunter. I am today celebrating and honoring a service hero, a gentleman that I have gotten to know over a period of time and absolutely deeply respect. He is a man that is highlighting an area of our community, people that have been willing to give their life for a belief that they have uh, we would also be able to say they are our first responders in many ways. We are going to talk to this gentleman and find out more about our service hero, John Duffy. Welcome, John. I'm so privileged to have you with us today. Uh, thank you for having me. It's been fabulous to have met you at the next Impactor when you won that show. And then, of course, down in Unstoppable in Florida and just seeing what you're doing with Chemo Buddies for Life and just now every day on um, Facebook, how you're bringing positivity to the world. So I'm honored to know you and I, I thank you so much for having me on your show. Well, you know, it's an uh, the, then it's a mutual honor kind of situation because you know let's get into who you are and what you do you know first of all i will say you know i asked him for a brief little bio because i wanted to make sure that i had some stuff right because this man is really impressive and i love the way he starts it is like okay yes we're going to be talking about the fact that you could say his titles here film producer he's a professor he's a motivational speaker he's an author he's a veteran supporter that kind of tells you the to the, the the titles yet then we get into it mr duffy got his education uh in the hard way on the street he grew up in the South Bronx. Yes, you hear it in his voice. Yes, during the worst years of the 60s and the 70s. You know, and then it goes on that, you, you know, and this was, I was really surprised about this one, that you dropped out of high school when you were 15 years old. And then your journey has taken you from the Bronx to Hollywood and then from the ghettos to greatness. I love it. You know, there you go. Boom. Mic drop. <laughs> 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 and and as as we get going here i want to just recognize who we've got with us we've got christopher Kaysen, uh and yeah, christopher. So, so grateful that you're with us we have rachel johnson with us too and um and as many more come please hashtag live hashtag replay all right so you you said it right there okay you are involved in the movies you are involved in storytelling you are involved in motivation you're involved in a lot of those type of activities as an author you are deeply 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 i mean look at the shirt deeply um you know a supporter of those our our military our veterans those that need a voice and need their stories told the thing that we were just talking about, and the reason I wanted to bring you on today, April the 15th, 2020, is because right now we're in the middle of a, a, an experience that the world is, is shared, is sharing, called a pandemic. And it's calling for those people that are willing to get out there and motivate others, and you are called and you have chosen to fulfill that calling and you you've been going live yourself you've been out there with inspiring messages that have inspired me that's why i asked you on here so thank you for doing that why don't you talk about that because you come from the movie industry and you are a producer you're kind of if you will kind of behind the scenes and now you're willing to get out there in front what was well, the motivation there? Well, I got called on a, a lot of my life has been doors have opened and I've gone through and then kind of recreated myself, created new identities and stepped up to what was required. So I started doing the Facebook lives because of all things, uh, a woman who I only know through Facebook who had a group called the South Bronx Network, you know, she saw my stuff and she said, you know, you need to do Facebook lives. And I went, I thought about it. And then I was like, said, you know, well, if I just, you know, touch one person it's probably worth it. So let me do it. So I, you know, I started it and then it's kind of expanded. And now, like you said, we're in this rather unique time. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, this Sunday, it, just an example of it, cause it blew my mind. I was watching um, uh, oh God, Bocelli do his concert from Milan in Italy and mm -hmm. just watching the drones fly over 
Paris and Italy and New York and nobody there. And just realizing this is the first time the world has kind of come to a stop, a pause. Everything has just stopped. And it's a unique time. And you and like you said, and I agree, it's we have a choice at this point. How do we respond to this and stepping up and trying to provide leadership and motivate people and inspire people and give them hope and give them the possibilities? You know, we're all called to that if we choose it. So, you know, it for me it was absolutely something, of course, whatever I can do to be of service is something I want to do. So that's what I'm trying to do and trying to do more of it and just find a way to be somebody who can be a contributor to that. And that's kind of sums it up. And that sums it up beautifully, in fact. And um, you you have been. <laughs> I, I love the fact that um, when and, and I don't know if you heard this one, too, but I started up Service Heroes again because of Jason Cisneros. He's. He put a call out to those people that had a voice of following to start getting out there again with inspirational messages, with with something positive, something to give back. Be, you know, be a part of the solution uh, rather than just, you know, like ignoring it. And so I got this the show going again to highlight people that are out there doing exactly that. You are one of them and you've been so you you actually have been sharing messages of of faith of of hope of believing and you don't know how it will happen but you know it will I, I, you know like when i was watching your show i loved it a couple of times i've watched it and i'm i'm writing things down because people come to you because they know that your background I mean, you now have been someone that has taught in film schools here in the Hollywood Beverly area, you you know, Beverly Hills area, you're well respected within the film industry. And here you are now going Facebook live. And when you're live, you're, you're, you're handling it, I would think like that film pro professional that you are, you're, you're highlighting people for their stories, you're bringing in their messages on the comments, and then you're highlighting them afterwards too. And there was there was one where I don't even remember exactly what the words were, but there there was like four or five words that that just summed it up. And you started using those a lot from that one particular show. You've been doing that, engaging your people as a storyteller. I think you might have been, th I, if I remember right, it was like I started saying spread the viruses of courage, the viruses of calm, the viruses of compassion. It was basically, yes. and I'm, I just blanked on the last the four word. C's. Yes, 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 yes. Four That's C's, exactly right? it. The four C's. Yeah. Spread that virus in the face of this virus and, and let us step up to be those voices for people because people are getting scared and rightfully so and people are. Uh, responding and fear is is a I always learned that fear is a warning sign to us that there's danger and that's fine to acknowledge the danger but if fear paralyzes you or fear stops you from moving forward now you let fear win that battle and that's when you have to acknowledge the fear but have faith take action be uh, over overcome and just like you and and me we were very fortunate to spend the last uh, end of February in, in Unstoppable at that Unstoppable Growth event with some a group of people who really all come from that uh, vision that we are unstoppable. And it's not like we ignore fear or that we ignore uh, things that are dangerous. We recognize them, but we don't let it stop us. We go out there unstoppable, willing to inspire others to their greatness. And that's what you're doing with this show every day. And, and I think we were all of us were lucky, honored, and blessed to be that the last event that we got to do coming into this because it gave us a strength that we carry from it, I think. So I know I feel great that, that I was part of that. Oh, yes. I mean, before the world shut down, we were at one of the very last events that was able to actually take place. And we were very, very fortunate for that. And, you know, yeah, you. <laughs> I have to just bring this up. He was talking about humor. You know, <laughs> these are some of your things. And I'm like, okay, National Beer Day. Okay, you know, and then and then you still, because 
you, you know, let's talk about this. Uh, you know, the basketball thing. At you, you've been you've been taking care of yourself. Uh, you know, you've made a shift. I've noticed it. it you know, recently. <laughs> Well, I've always been, you know, I play basketball up until now. Unfortunately, I can't. That's why I made that funny uh, picture. But I play basketball every week, full court. I work out. Uh, I've always uh, been into fitness. But Jason Cisneros, who was the one who put on Unstoppable and obviously a good uh, a friend of us, you know, a, m a few months back, he started this 5 a.m. workout, 90 days, yeah. which yeah. kind of reignited um, that. Uh, fitness passion in me to take it to the next level. So I started working out again and I went, I went on to my keto thing. And so I went from 217 down to 185 and I was working out six days a week. And, and so now, you know, I can't work out in the gym, which is my, you know, it, it, you know, the one greatest regret, I guess. But so I'm out there mm -hmm. walking and running, which I'm, I'm not a fan of, but you got to do it. And so, mm -hmm. but Jason, I give him credit for inspiring that, inspiring all of us in that way. And, just always raising the bar. So it's like at this point I go, okay, this is my, this is the new me forever. This isn't like a diet. This isn't, you know, something to do short term. This is a lifelong commitment to step it up even more physically, my immune system. So we can, I can stay healthy and I love, you know, playing basketball. And to me, when this is over, boy, I'm going to be so happy that day I get on the basketball court. So, you know, you know and, uh, isn't it the truth? So many things that we kind of almost in a way didn't take for granted, but it was just, you know, like, oh, it's always going to be there. All of a sudden exactly. to to have something that was such a part of what you absolutely a passion of yours to to do. It, it's it's not it, when you can get out there and do it again. Oh, we will oh. be taking it nothing will be be taken for granted again and it actually you know i don't know about you but it makes me think of my grandparents that used to always say your generation you know because they were the ones from the depression they were the ones from world war ii and you know it's like oh you guys take everything you know it's like be careful kind of situation and and you know now full circle but you so and now I want to talk about that because you have worked with and you believe in and you support uh, many of those from the the fine, you know, that generation and then to the newer generation, the veterans. What got you so involved with becoming such an advocate for for our military and for our veterans? Well, like I said to you, you know, um, my life has been one of doors open and, I, and I've gone through and then it opens up a new opportunity. And then I decide to, you know, take on that uh, opportunity, that, that, that identity. So for me, I got an opportunity years ago to do some training videos with the U.S. Marine Corps. And I had never, my dad was in the Army. He fought in the Philippines. But he died when I was four years old. So I never got to know him or know that reality. So I wasn't a, a, attached to or connected to the military. If anything, it was the exact opposite. And I was kind of anti-military in my, my youth. So, but having to do this training video with the US Marine Corps, I went down to uh, Camp Pendleton and Quantico and I met some of the best young men and women I had ever met in my life. And I was just blown away by their leadership, their sacrifice, their service, their attitudes, their commitment, all of the, uh, all of the above. And I went, wow, that's such an amazing group of people. If an opportunity comes up, I said it to myself and in the world, I guess, if an opportunity comes up to ever support them in any fashion, I'll do it. And by saying that, boy, did I get a lot of opportunities. <laughs> I mean, well, the world just threw opportunities at me to work with military and work with veterans. And I jumped at every one of them because it was like, okay, if I'm going to give back, what better group for me to use my resources to give back to than this group? And so it just became a, a passion of mine and a commitment of mine. And I made some of the best friends and the best uh, people that I've ever met in my life are now part of my circle and my friends. And, and I'm just so honored and blessed to be part of it. So, you know, as a civilian to hang with some of these amazing people is, is just for me so freaking cool. So, <laughs> so I get a chance to do what I can and I do it whenever I can, if it's ever, you know, whenever. It can. So I've done trainings for the uh, different groups because in Hollywood, there's groups of military vets working in Hollywood now. There's one called VME, which is at over like a 1500 
military vets who are working in the Hollywood industry. Some of the best things that I think have happened to Hollywood is their involvement, um, this group of people. So I do what I can to support them. Whenever they ask me, can you do a training? Of course. Can you do this? Of course. So that, that's kind of what, what, and then I got to direct a, uh, for a veteran, a Vietnam veteran buddy of mine, uh, two short films called The Flag, which I, I was helping to produce, but he, his, he had no director. And then I said, okay, I guess I'm directing it too. So I directed them and we ended up showing them at the GI uh, Film Festival in Washington, DC, which once again was one of the greatest experiences of my life because I hung out with some of the best people because they weren't like Hollywood people. They weren't people who were about themselves. They were people who were about sacrificing about service. And to me, that's the people I respect the most. Even though I, I work in Hollywood and I that's my community, people who are about themselves just don't impress me. They just don't. And mm -hmm. I think people who are about service are the people who impress me in life. So I'm, I'm honored and lucky to work with people like that in the veteran community who are making films and they come from a different place. I love it. I love it very well. You know, how inspirational is that too? Because, uh, and especially for a show like Service Heroes, where it, it is encouraging people to find that service hero from within to then give without, you know, give to others. And, and the whole idea here that you come from an industry that is somewhat known for, you know, it's gla glamour and, and that tinsel town type feel. However, it is not necessarily, like you said, some of the people that are as serious about service to others, it might be a little bit more self gratification. Not all though, uh, not all. And, no, and, and that's what, what I am, as I've been getting, and we were talking before we went live, as I've gotten to know some filmmakers and, and those that are involved one way or another in film and, and cinema, uh, is that there are those that are very purpose driven. There are those that are like a part of that indie, you know, that, that, that the more of a grassroots kind of filmmaking, the more raw storytelling, the more let, let's, let's really take it back to what it all meant to be in the very beginning and telling the story. And that's what you like to do is tell the story, right? Well, you know, uh, the stories I love, and I've done it all kinds, because when you work in the position, a line producer is kind of like the hands-on producer. So I've done a lot of that. And then I've also been a producer. And so in that ca capacity, I've done different kinds of films. But the films I love the most and the ones I've had a chance to do a little bit more of and I continue to hopefully do more of in the future are ones based on true stories. Mm -hmm. And they're ones that inspire. Um, they're entertaining, but they inspire us to greatness. Their stories kind of like my story of overcoming adversity because I came from the ghetto. I came from being a high school dropout. The odds were against me. And I love stories of people who all the odds are against them. And in the face of all those uh, odds being against them, they overcome anyway. They achieve anyway. They succeed anyway. And it's that journey uh, in Hollywood. There's a thing called the hero's journey. It's the Rocky story. It's the... Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that kind of story where somebody from the bottom makes it no matter what. They don't let anything stop them. So those are the movies I love. And we were talking a little earlier about one that I did in Canada with a Kevin Sorbo who directed and acted in. He used to be Hercules on TV. And it was a great experience, a great guy. Absolutely. That's, And it was a true story about two con artists, a, a comedy, uh, but drama, a, a two con artists in the 1930s because of the Great Depression. And they couldn't, they were trying to find oil, but they couldn't find oil. So they started um, to survive. They started conning these old, uh, widows out of their money, telling them there was oil on their land. And eventually, <laughs> eventually, accidentally, they discovered the biggest oil find in the history of Texas and the world. And then they had a decision to make. If they, <laughs> if they announced the oil find, they were going to go to jail. And if they didn't, they could get away but they wanted to be finally have be known for something of value in life. So they chose the hard path and they went to jail and they announced that they found the oil and it changed the life of Texas, that town, the poor people there, and it changed the world. It's a fabulous, funny story and uh, uh, inspirational. And I love making movies like that. 
So that's kind of hopefully I got one coming up um, and maybe uh, at the end I'll talk about it, uh, about this boxer from Houston, Texas, Termite, who took the Iraqis to the Olympics in 2004. And right now we're praying for him because he's in a hospital with the coronavirus. So. Oh, yeah. Okay. Now that makes full because I saw your post about termite, but I didn't know who he really was. Now it makes sense. Well, I'll just jump now if you don't mind. Cause I yeah, think. No, it, please it, do. It, yeah. Let's talk about that. Yes. And, and, and termite, I met him years ago and in five minutes I fell in love with this guy and we became like brothers in an instant. It was like we're brothers for life. Mm -hmm. And his story was amazing because he almost was a world champ boxer, like welterweight. He fought in the last Muhammad Ali fight, lost the decision, a contested decision. His life crashed, got into a cocaine, became addicted, turned his life around. And then he got a second chance and he got an opportunity that was given to him of all crazy things. They asked him to come over to Iraq because his dad was a pest exterminator to kill bugs on the military base. So this guy prayed on it and he, he says to his wife, I think God's calling me to a mission. His wife said, God's not talking to you. Please don't go to Iraq. It was the worst time in the war. And he said, no, I got to go. I'm being called to a mission. So he went to Iraq and he's killing bugs on a military base, gets into a beef with a colonel from Texas. They become friends and they find out about his boxing and they come to him and they say, hey, what are the odds you can put together an Iraqi boxing team for the Olympics in 10 months? And he laughed and he said, you're kidding me, right? The odds are a million to one. They went great odds. We don't need the million. We just need the one go do it. So now he's given this mission and a second chance at his identity of who he is. He has 10 months to train these Iraqi kids, qualify them for the Olympics, get Iraq back into the Olympics because it had been kicked out because of Saddam Hussein's son's brutality and not get killed by Al Qaeda. And in 10 months, he pulled off the impossible and he took Iraq to the uh, 2004 Olympics. American from Texas, Incre incredible loving guy. And now he coaches kids uh, in uh, in Texas in boxing called Fighter Nation. And he's just, unfortunately, a few weeks ago, he caught the virus and he's fighting for his life right now in the hospital in uh, Houston. And that's why you've been seeing on my page, I've been right. praying for him every day as yeah. so many other people have been yeah. for recovery. And, um, but we're gonna make that movie and with God's help, he's gonna be part of out and uh, helping us do it. And, and yeah. the name of it is they call me termite. So I've been asking people to pray for him. But it's, mo it's the most amazing true story that I've ever been involved with. And I, and, um, I, I just can't wait to share it with the world. I, I absolutely love it. And, and yes, I, you know, and this is where when people have been putting out, you know, please pray, please have a moment of science, please think about, please, you know, put it out there. Um, uh, for the healing processes for all of these people, you know, quite honestly, that's what I, I'm right there. It's like, we need to be, all of us need to, whatever our belief systems are, we need to be putting it out there because it's that collective uh, healing energy. And we've been talking about that a lot on this show, how with raising the frequency through what we call unconditional love, uh, you know, healing powers, uh, we can actually, the miracles can take place. And so I, I recognize the name termite and I'm thinking, did his parents give him that name? But, you know, I was like, okay, I'm not going to question. I just been asked by John. So there you go. So termite's well, been in my, you know, my heart and my prayers. So, you know. Your dad is a pest exterminator and, and you're a little kid, I guess. The nickname termite makes a whole lot of sense, you know? Uh, yeah, you wonder what kind of trouble you got into. <laughs> no kidding. Uh, I, a good boxer, I guess. <laughs> I love it. Well, you know, and, and so I do want to revisit. I want to go back into your story, in into how it is that you ended up, uh, you know, a dropout at the age of 15 from high school in the Bronx, in an area of the Bronx that, you know, the odds I'm sure were completely against you in so many different ways. And you end up in Hollywood. What is that story? I don't know that story. I want to know that story. I have a feeling we need to hear that story because right now people need to hear inspirational situations where you, you know, the odds, you know, it's that hero story. We want to hear your hero story, John. <laughs> well, I, I, I've uh, and hopefully I'll, I'll, I'll get a chance to share it in, in another form. So I've written 
I just completed the second, um, uh, first draft of a second memoir. The first memoir is called Black Irish, Not Your Average White Boy. So that's my first memoir that I wrote. And the other one is called um, Mal to Reagan, A Born Again American. And so those two books share different aspects of the journey that I made from the South Bronx when I dropped out. So I was the son, the second son, the youngest son of two Irish immigrants who came to America during the Great Depression. And my dad died when I was four and my mother raised me and my brother. So we could never move out of the uh, uh, South Bronx because we were too poor. We, we lived on two checks, a social security check from my dad and a veterans check. And that's how we survived. So I followed, unfortunately, in my brother's uh, footsteps and quit high school when I was 15. And then um, just started to work and just started to scramble and started to survive. And luckily I got, you know, I had a, a passion for learning that came after I left school and I started to read. So in my life, I've probably read a couple thousand books in all different fields. And I've just became a lifelong learner. And then doors started opening up. And like I said, in Politically, I got involved in, at the age of 16, radical activity, because in my neighborhood, you had, there was no role models of success. There were no entrepreneurs. There, there were no business people that, were, that I could look up to. So there was drug dealers, there was gangs, and then there was people who were radicals trying to overthrow the government. So of the three, I went down the third path because the first two did not impress me. I didn't want to get involved in drugs. I didn't want to get involved with gangs. And I was into sports. I played basketball on the street, not on teams, but just street ball. And so I went the other path. And then by the time I was 26, I ended up leading a trip to China and meeting with the Chinese at that time uh, before I eventually became disillusioned with that path, came back to New York, um, got my GED, went to college and started to recreate myself again and create a new identity for myself. And then I got into acting. And so from acting, I started acting in New York in theater and film and went from that, opened up a door, and finally um, met Tony Robbins, went through a fire walk with him, and that just flipped my life. And then I started seeing that that I had 100% responsibility for my life, and it gave me the mindset of being unstoppable. And that's when I said, I'm going for my dreams. And at the time, I was working in the post office as a mail handler for five years on the midnight shift. I quit that and said, I'm going for my dreams, and I'm moving to California. And I did with $100 in my pocket and started and recreated myself in California. First acting, I became a counselor with Runaway Kids in Hollywood. I did every kind of job you could imagine. And finally, the door opened up behind the camera as a producer. And I took that opportunity and that created a new identity for me. And it's just been like that. I just keep recreating myself whenever life has been. I've been blessed to get uh, opportunities to, uh, to, to step into. And so now you've been involved with one way or another produced or line produced 35 filter, feature films. Correct. And that, and like I 35. said, when I, wow. I, it, you know, when I did the first one, you know, um, I, I, I tell people when I speak at film school and I do my, uh, as a professor now, and that's a funny story that a high school dropout ended up <laughs> a professor at a Catholic university and I dropped out of a Catholic high school. So I, I was like, you know, God has a great sense of humor because if he's putting me as a professor, this got to be. <laughs> it, 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 uh, but when I teach in the class, you know, I tell them the first movie I got my job as a line producer, I bluffed my way in. And I had done some music videos up until that point. The director asked me, have you ever done it? And I said, yeah. And of course, I, you know, I was bluffing. Uh, I knew, but I didn't know, right? So I went after that, and I took a friend out to lunch for three hours who was a line producer, and I asked him about 500 questions. And after that three hours, I said, I can do this. And I and a lot of it was that unstoppable mindset yeah, that I got yeah, from Tony okay. Robbins, that once you believe that you're unstoppable, you find a way. So yeah. I found a way, and I made the first movie as a line producer, and I pulled off some, you know, because I believed that, I pulled off amazing things. I got Paramount Studio to give us two days for free on the back lot. I just did this wild stuff because I didn't believe I could stop, that I could be stopped. When they told me you can't do that, I went, well, maybe you can't, but maybe I can. Let me see. So I did the first one and that opened up a new door and a new identity. And people were like, wow, you're good at this. And I, and I liked it because it was working with people. It was, and I love people. That's, mm -hmm. I, you can say the thing I love most in life is people. So yeah the opportunity to always work with groups of people and work on something, to me, that's like, that's not work. I'm, I never work. 
You know, I'm mm -hmm. just blessed to have these experiences that just keep on happening. So, you know, I, I, I the last day I worked was in the post office. I haven't worked since, and that's a long decades ago. Um, so, it, you know, it's a blessing to get to do what I do. I love it. Now, okay, your memoirs, your two books. Are you going to be putting those? Are they going to be a, a film at some point in time? I, I hope. We I, you know, that's a that's a question that other people have raised, and I'm like, maybe yes, maybe no. I I don't know. I'm I'm like, um, maybe. But but if, at this point, I just want to get them. I have to get them. I uh, the first one I wrote a few drafts. This one I just wrote uh, one draft. I need to edit them. I need to get them into a form where I can get them uh, published and out there. And then mm -hmm. I'll decide, think about that down the road, if that's, you know, with some other people's input, of course, whether right. they think it would make sense or not. Because, you know, I, I, I'm close to my story and I'm going, you know, there's elements I say, yeah, it could get turned into a script. And then there's part of me that goes, eh, not really. Um, so I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But, but oh, I I, 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 okay, I'm 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 now like my mind is going crazy. I'm thinking the '60s, the '70s, the Bronx, the you know the hero story, 15 years old, the whole backstory of your mom and your dad, and the you know the that whole thing, and then your brother, and then you know the choices, and going to China at 26, and and then going from the Bronx to Hollywood, and then bluffing your way into a line producer's position, and then what you pull off i mean by golly gee willikers if that's <laughs> not a movie what is I mean, oh my god uh, <laughs> but, you know, well thank you for saying that well it's been a crazy um unique life I, there's no doubt about it it's been uh, um you know amazing when i when i step away from it and look at it it's just wow you know and I, when i give speeches i always say obviously god had a bigger plan for me than i had for myself because I didn't have that plan. I mean, you know, when I was growing up in the South Bronx, I didn't have a plan to be in Hollywood. I didn't even, I had no clue. I didn't want to be an actor. I didn't want to be any of those things. Um, I didn't want to be a producer. I didn't want to be a motivational speaker. I didn't want to be a professor. None of those things were on my radar as a young high school dropout kid in the South Bronx. All of it was on my radar was survival. You know, let me get a job, let me survive. I mean, if I survived, that was the biggest accomplishment I could achieve. Um, survival in itself was an accomplishment. So all these things kind of came. And of course I stepped into them and I did what it took to, to succeed at it. But it wasn't like I had a, you know, there's some people who know what they want to be at, at, at a young age and they go that, they, and, I, I, and that's great. I never was that kid. I didn't know what I wanted to be. I didn't grow up. I'm still not grown up. I mean, I'm still, you know, I still got things. I'm like, well, yeah, maybe I'll do this. You know, I, I say I have two or three lives left in, in me and I've done seven already and maybe I'll get another three. So I'm still kind of recreating myself and I just don't know where it's going to take me, but boy, what a hell of a journey it's been. Oh my goodness. Okay. So I have to ask, cause you, you know, I mean, I, I'm sure many of you and uh, we've got more people stopping in Jody Parr. Carol has acknowledged you. I want to also welcome Jody. I absolutely adore you. Skip Thomas. Grateful that you're here with us. Happy service day to you. Surface heroes day to you too. Uh, yes, it is every day that we can all be a service hero. And uh, even a mini series or even a mini series. <laughs> Christopher is voting for it. He's like, yeah, dang it. You know, that sounds good. Okay. So let me ask you this. I know we've talked about your directing, your producing, and we've featured some of the films that you've been involved in. And how about the acting? Do You know, like, would we know any of uh, like the characters you've played or, you know, any of those things? Cause you had that face, you had that sound. It's like, okay, I know, I know, I know I've seen something, well, but I'm trying well, to put my, my, my finger on it right now. Well, nowadays, everybody always thinks they recognize me, but you know, it, it's because I look like, and I've been, I've been with him and I got pictures with him cause we, uh, we did a, a stuff supporting the veterans too, is John Boyd. So yeah. a lot of people look at me and go, are you? And it's like, no, no, I'm not John Boy. He, <laughs> he is older than me, um, a lot older than me. But, uh, <laughs> but you know, when I first started acting, I did theater and then I did some movies. And I back then I used to have a mustache and a goatee and they used to cast me as the bad guy, the killer. The You know, I used to have three earrings. So I was the tough bad guy. Um, <laughs> but nothing that you would remember. And then of course, you know, 
that career lasted for a short period of time. And then I took, I stepped into the opportunity behind the camera. And even though I loved acting, I was even teaching acting for a little while to a kids. Um, I wasn't able to succeed, you know, because acting is a very tough profession to succeed financially or to even guarantee any real income. So when the opportunity opened up for me to line produce, I went, well, this is a skill set that I really got because I'm, I'm, I'm good at solving problems. I'm good at working with people and I love it. So that became my new identity. And But in the last uh, six months, a year, I got a lot of people kind of dropping the suggestion that I need to start acting again. And I'm like, yeah, let me think on that one. So I, I don't know where that's going to go, I'm, but I'm thinking on it. And if uh, if it's meant to be, it'll happen. And maybe I'll open up that door again because I really loved it. And, and I had a great time doing it. But at the same time, my identity has grown so much past that that I'm not sure. One, I don't want to spend most of my day going out to auditions because that's I, I, that's just not who I want to be at this point in my life. Um, but we'll see. We'll see what, what where that takes me. Uh, I'm open to it. I never like to close any doors. You know, I like to always say that's why I ended up in Unstoppable with you because, hmm. you know, I had 99 reasons why I shouldn't have went to Florida. And then my brain said, yeah, but just say yes and now make it happen. And I was like, Ugh. and of course, <laughs> and you I did. said yes and I went. And, and it was, that's how we become what we are because we say yes. Right, right. And and what a motivational experience it was for all of us that were there. I mean, absolutely, you really do feel as though anything is possible. And then with the people that you connect with, that there are so many people that are like-minded and are making things happen right now. And everybody's pulling together. You know, I want to, I want to also say something else in that you right now during this period of time, you know, cause I've been marking the days of these service hero shows by the date. So this is April 15th. Many typically think of it as tax day, but right now this year, 2020, it is not. That's all been put aside because of what is happening in the world today. Now, as yeah, I'm thinking as a storyteller, because you you keep mentioning, and before we went live, you even mentioned it, and we're gonna go into what it is that you're doing for many people right now and offering to for those of your friends and such that have been coming to you. But right now, as you're looking at the events of the world in the eyes of a storyteller, of an eyes, the eyes of a producer, someone that has taught this now through film institutes and such things. What are you seeing that's happening? Like if you were to say, okay, I see this as a movie right now. What, what would you say from that chair from you know that director's chair, that producer's chair of what's happening in the world, and what kind of an inspirational story? Because you've told inspirational stories. How would you go after this story that we're living right now? That's a wow. That's a great, great, great question. Um, you know, like any. Uh, story or any movie different people see the world different it's just like you know if, if you're in a, a room and there's a lot of people you can have the camera wide and see the whole room or you can focus on two people having a, a very intimate conversation in the corner and so what you choose to focus on and, and what you choose to see is the story you tell and you can tell multiple stories but we all choose to tell different stories based on what touches and inspires us. So I guess coming at, you know, through this and watching what's happening, one, you were talking about you know, your grandfather and in, in, in the depression and my parents lived through the depression and World War II. And you realize even though this is a unique time and this is a unique situation, people have lived through uh, very horrible times in the world and of different types. So mm -hmm. World War II was a horrible time for so many people and so many people died in the war and so many people died in poverty during the Great Depression. So we're, we're living through another uh, challenging time in the world. Mm -hmm. And in that, like, you know, to go back to the hero's journey, um, there's always heroes. And mm -hmm. in, in, in the World War II, there was people who stepped up and became heroes 
and, and sacrifice to lead us uh, to freedom and lead us to a better path. And now I would focus the stories, if I was to tell the stories, to find those stories of today's heroes. Those people, whether they're, you know, healthcare workers or doctors or first responders or, or, or people who, who have fought through the virus. It's finding those stories of, of the heroes, like you were chemo buddy, you, your life and the people you support are people who got through cancer and survived. And that's heroes. And that's why you are who you are. And it's finding those stories of today's heroes. You can find stories that focus on the negative. You can find stories that focus on all that, all the bad that's happening, but don't, that doesn't interest me because that's not what will inspire us to get through this and be greater because of it. So it's those stories, finding the story of overcoming, the story of uh, scientists who, who solve the problems and come up with new inventions for us. There's so many heroes uh, uh, coming out of this experience. So many people, you know, in, in the case of Termite, he has nurses in his ward, the, the coronavirus ward, who are decided to self-isolate in the hospital so as not to go home and they're living in the hospital. I mean, those are heroic people and there's so many of them. And, and so when you look at the world that way, you realize there's so many amazing, great people in this world. And yet when we look at the media, unfortunately the media makes us money off of promoting the negative and the bad. And so that's the story they want to sell because that's how they profit financially. That's fine. You can watch that for a minute or two, but don't waste your time there because at the end of the day, that's not the real story. The real story is the people who are stepping up and sacrificing and making a difference. That's the real story, at least at least to me in my humble opinion. And I love your humble opinion because I absolutely agree with you and concur 100%. And that's, you know, in my humble way, that's what I've been trying to do with, with this, this little show is just start to share with those that are watching the people like yourself, like, like the Caroline of Pinde of, you know, the NGO whisperer and her getting out there and helping to make a difference in the world and hi highlighting and, and spreading, you know, a uh, 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 focusing the fact that we need to change what's happening behind closed doors for domestic violence. We've got Richard Gordon with us. Richard, love, love, love you, you know, and he's out there helping to promote the fact that we each have, a, you know, that we can make our own choices and that we have a better self. And, you know, he's the, the uh, and, and, and his abilities to be, you know, a dojo uh, instructor and such things, you know, and, and that we can, we can make a difference in this world. There were so many people that are, are doing exactly that. Uh, my board vice president, she lives basically in the hospitals that she goes to. She has to travel to different hospitals. She goes because she is a, she's a nuclear um, radiologist. She goes in there, she stays where she's at, and then she goes to the next one. She's had to stay away from her family because of the fact that she doesn't want to uh, bring anything home to them. And so, you know, it's, it's, those are the people. Yes, the stories, the inspirational stories, you said it so well, in that we need to be focusing in on that during this period of time. And there's so many people doing so many heroic things that they with themselves would say i'm not a hero this it's my job this is what i'm called to do it's my job but we can see them as the heroes that they are right absolutely and it's just like um i've been saying through my facebook lives i don't know who 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 turned me on to it or how i got to it but you know mr rogers you know used to say find the helpers and you'll always find people helping and i think we were you know a blessed by, you know, uh, and I have to give a special shout out to Jason Cisneros because he's yeah. a unique, and I just love the brother, but he put together an amazing people, some I knew from the past and some I met, like yourself and at these events. And all the people who, who showed up in Unstoppable are people doing this in every different aspect of life, being the helpers, being the service warriors, like uh, Pastor, Pastor Rudy with his uh, yeah. certain ministry. Yeah. and his family going out there and rescuing uh, young children from sex traffickers. And, you know, what all the different groups that are in um, 
unstoppable and misfit nation. I mean, it, what an honor and blessing to ha be around people like you and people like them. For me, it doesn't get better than that. I mean, right. that's really, that's what life's about. You mentioned Richard Gordon, he, you know, he's a military vet. He's been encouraging me to, to finish writing. Uh, he, you know, sends me notes every couple of days going, are you writing? Gr a great human being doing great stuff. So there's so many people and, and you know, it's like, God, you know, where I came from to be where I am, to have people who are all about service and trying to make a difference and doing the best they can to encourage and inspire others. What a blessing to be around people like that. I mean, you know, it does, it really doesn't get better than that. Um, and I'm just honored to be part of it. So, you know, I keep finding those people all over uh, life. And so, you know, that that's what your show is and that's what you're doing. You're bringing all these people to others and sharing them with others and letting us know about their work and support them and support what you're doing. So that's well, just you. really cool. Yeah. Well, and, 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 you know, and this is where all of us together, and this is why I wanted to highlight those that are here right now, because, you know, like with Carolina Pinde, I, I will say, you know, she, she actually was reading when we were live. And if you guys haven't seen that live, you need to go look at it and, and watch it, please, because she was reading how the, because of the quarantine situation, that those that were already in a domestic violence situation, they've been at that much more at risk because they're being imprisoned basically with their abusers. And we were talking about that very thing with certain ministries and their mission to going out there and helping to find those kids that have been kidnapped. Well, you know, now we've got another element involved. They're not necessarily even being kidnapped. They're being kidnapped in their own homes now. Some And then within some of these countries, because of social distancing, and we just heard some more um, jails that were releasing some prisoners here in the United States, they're saying they're not releasing the violent offenders. However, in some countries, some it, some of them are being released and then where are they going? They're going back home. And then it just, they're, they're, it just keeps that whole situation a, a, a problem. And that's where I am grateful for people like you, John, that are willing to be out there and telling the stories and being willing to go live because, you know, like you said, things present themselves for you and you will reinvent yourself. And I love it. <laughs> like, okay, well, uh, you need a line producer. I'll figure it out. I'll take someone to lunch for three hours. And by the time we're done, I'll be, a, I'll be officially a line producer. And because of the fact that you didn't put yourself in a box. And this is where I really want to go here right now. This is a time for us to say there's no more boxes, even if we are quote unquote in a, a different energy a different situation than we're typically used to we are having a gift if we are if we're healthy right now let's put it that way because there are those like termite and those that we want to respect this right now i'm not saying that this is a gift for them it is not and we need to be aware of it we need to be aware of those that are on the front lines taking care of this because this is real and this is a time where we need to be focused and saying thank you and what can we do to help them however for all of us that are okay that we're healthy and we have some time to say okay i'm not no box no box there might be a room but this is not a box anything is possible i can reinvent myself what is going to what is it going to look like and what do i want it to look like going on the other side and you going live i i have to say it just really has i love it when you go live and when i can be there i Thank am you. because you you come from such a unique perspective and when you are talking it's like whoa that really hit me it hit me to the core and you have a gift for that and so you're now saying okay what does it look like for john duffy coming out of this and you were saying well you're kind of looking at maybe the reinventing of john duffy and maybe it might be that you might go on more stages you might become more of a coach you may add some of those elements to your future you're looking at it right absolutely and and, and what you're saying is so important for other people too and not just for me but you know 
in any situation, you have a choice. And sometimes that was the best message. I, one of the best messages I got from Tony Robbins when I was younger was that no matter how bad it is, you have a choice and you choose how you react to it. You can't choose what happens to you sometimes. You can't, we didn't choose this, uh, the world to be shut down. We didn't choose the, choose the virus. We didn't choose any of this, but it happened. It is what it is. So what do we do? Well, we have a choice as to how do we react to it and find positives and create positives and reinvent ourselves and use this as find opportunities to serve on a bigger level or to help others. There's so many possibilities, start new businesses. It just provides us with so many new opportunities if we focus on the opportunity, not the problem. We focus on the gift, not the, not the thing. So, you know, that's what we're trying to do, I think for people. So find those ways to reinvent yourself, find those ways to find new opportunities in this to grow, to be able to become bigger and, and, and contribute more because of this. It gives you this chance that maybe you wouldn't have taken otherwise. You didn't take the time because you were running around doing all this busy work that we all do in the world. And now you got a chance to reflect more, to connect more, to, to get closer to people maybe. You can turn it into its opposite. Instead of being a distance, you can get tighter with people, maybe on online and on the phone. But when that ends, you're gonna have built those tighter relationships that now you can take out into the real world. So there's so much good that we can turn out of this. We just gotta step up to it. And so, and one of the things I think in the midst of it is I would like, and it's part of what I talk about online is that finding a way to bridge the divide between us, finding a way to learn to find that we're in this together we're not the same. We never will be all the same, but we can bridge the divide. I grew up in New York. I, I like the Yankees. Somebody grew up in Boston. They like the Red Sox. Well, we don't have to hate on each other because we're <laughs> different teams. You know, right. we got our team. That's fine. But other people, right. the same as politically, you know, we have different teams. Some are Democrats, some are Republicans, some are independent, some are nothing. It doesn't matter. Same as religions. We don't have to. We can stay, have our team, but we don't have to hate on somebody who has a different team. We can find a way to bridge that divide, to respect our, each other and find a way to say, you know, at the end of the day, from a distance, we're all in this together. Why don't we get that message? Why don't we use this opportunity of this situation to understand there's a bigger message here and we can learn from it and we can find a way to treat each other with respect, listen to each other, and not hate on each other because we see the world different because we've experienced the world different. We don't have to do that. That's a choice. Don't make, I would rather people make a choice towards love and ha not hate and not as a slogan because everybody uses slogans, but in practice, you know, right. treat everybody with uh, as if they're your family. What's the problem with that? And not the family, mm -hmm. you hate, the family you love. <laughs> <laughs> Good thing you, uh, yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> Everybody, everybody is getting a chuckle out of that one. I'm not going to go there. I'm not no, going to go there. there. Okay, I'm not going to. However, that really good. Okay, you know, because as you're talking, I'm thinking about that, you know, that whole thing, you know, like, okay, you know, the movie, okay, the, you're, you're going through the hero story right now of this period of time. And what is that hero? Who is that hero in the room? Who are the heroes in the room? Right now, those that are watching this, I know who many of you are and what you're doing. And jo uh, John, you are dropping not golden, but diamond nuggets. Yes, absolutely. I agree with you, Caroline. He is. Um, and this is where, as we start to close the hour, I want I want to give an opportunity because you you really do have so many amazing gifts to share with the world. And, and right now, during this period of time, you are giving back. And if people want to be able to follow you, they want to be able to know when you go live, the, you know, find out more about you, where would they be able to go to, to connect with John Duffy? Well, probably for now um, would be Facebook, you know, my, my Facebook page and connect with me there. Um, I haven't, I, I don't spend a lot, I, I'm going to need to clean up. I'm almost at 5,000, but I'm going to clean some of that up because there's a lot of people who are no longer on Facebook. So I'm going to remove those non, 
Facebook folks so I can clean up some space. But Facebook is probably the best place. And then I do Facebook lives either. I've been doing them every Sunday. The times push a little between three or four o'clock based on what I'm doing. So that's probably the best place to connect with me. And, um, and then reach out to me by Facebook, send me a direct message. You know, uh, if I can help anybody in any way, please uh, direct message me and, and um, you know, we'll connect. And I'm trying to do a lot more of that. So that's one thing. Well, you know, and I want to thank you for that because, you know, all of us, all of us collectively working and giving like you are the service that you're giving right now, the passion that you're sharing and the inspiration that I know many are, I mean, the words that are being shared through the comments right now and the love that is being given to you for, for what it is that you are, are, you know, the time that has been well spent, let's just put it that way. And I know I have learned from you, I, you know, and, and I learned more about you, which was very fun. You know, <laughs> I, w I don't know that I would have seen, uh the the whole um though i can see it now but the whole three earring kind of thing and the the you know the facial hair and that whole thing i, I i'm like oh, okay yeah i used to have a mullet too I'm, I'm, i may get, <laughs> I may get another one if i don't cut my hair soon but uh, <laughs> i know we're all oh that's a whole nother thing too <laughs> they, i mean right now there's so many people that are tongue-in-cheeking so many different things like your little beer thing that was pretty fun that little post <laughs> but you know any last minute nuggets you would like to share before we close this up you know once again i mean we're in a uh, a challenging time uh, obviously everybody has different perspectives about it and different focuses and different ways of looking at it but what we can do is um respect each other be kind to each other be compassionate have courage be calm find a way to turn this into an opportunity to be a better person and to help others and support people who are out there helping people like you and all the different organizations. So many good organizations out there doing good work. You know, there's so many ways to help them. And when this period is over, let us not forget uh, what just happened, but let us take advantage of this to come out and be better people who do a little bit more in whatever way you can to make the world better, your family better, your friends better, your community better, and just step up. You know, take advantage of this to, to as a calling to you to, um, you know, to make a difference for the better in the world. Why not? I love it. Why not? I love it. Why not? What do you got to lose? <laughs> so today, as we close April the 15th, 2020, the Service Hero Show, 365 Days of Awesome, Celebrate Success Through Service. John Duffy, I want to thank you for being the service hero that you are. You, my dear John Duffy, have inspired us with this hour that we've been able to hear your words of wisdom. We've been able to hear your hero's journey. We have been able to hear from your heart. And I know that you also have had a call out to those that are saying, yes, John Duffy, I hear you. I am going to be that better person and I am going to get out there and serve like you are too. So I want to thank you for the service that you give to all of us and have been giving to those many that you've been serving for years, the military, the veterans, those in film, so many different people. You have been giving of yourself for years and today you gave of yourself here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. That is so, um, and you're such a special person. God bless you and God bless what you're doing. You're just doing a fabulous job. Thank you so much. Well, thank you very much. And then everybody that's here, you are welcome if you want to be a part of what we do at the closed group at Chemo Buddies for Life. Tonight is Wednesday. It's What's Up Wednesday. We have been every Wednesday been learning from our vice president who has been living in the different hospital situations. She brings relevant and current information of what is happening, in particular, how to be able to help protect those within our community, the Chemo Buddies community and those that are at risk, how we can take some good common sense approaches and the latest and greatest information to help protect ourselves and our families. We meet in the chat at five o'clock Pacific, eight o'clock 
Eastern in the evening. Come and join us. We would we would love to see you there. Thank you, John. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Okay. Bye.